Today marks Governor Hassan Joho's third day in office as Mombasa County Chief in his second and final term. It is also the third day since he's de he declared his 2022 presidential bid. In his first term as governor, he was at loggerheads with the government. Public outbursts between him and the president characterized his recent years in the limelight. Let's take a look. Hassan Joho's political career may have been birthed in 2004 following the death of the then Kisauni member of parliament, Karisa Maitha. Today, Ali Hassan Joho is not only ODM deputy party leader and Governor 001 serving his second term, but also a likely presidential candidate in 2022. <laughs> Dogged by controversy, Joho is probably a clear proof that there is nothing as bad publicity. He turned every government, so to speak, attack into a stepping stone to the top. His star started to rise in 2007 when Joho overwhelmingly won the Kisauni parliamentary seat. In 2010, the U.S. Embassy linked Joho to drug trafficking in a dozier by the then Ambassador Michael Rainberger. If they truly mean well for Mombasa, if they love Mombasa, some of them proposed in their manifestos and the, in their agenda that they have good ideas to eradicate drugs, I welcome them. I am ready to meet them tonight so they tell us how we can work together to improve the standards of the lives of the people of Mombasa. In 2013, Joho made history becoming Mombasa's first governor, beating Suleiman Shabal and Abdallah Marua. At only 37, he was already in charge of a county that hosts Kenya's oldest and port city, Mombasa. <laughs> Joho's celebration as governor in 2013 did not last long. He would spend most of the first years in office fighting battles to save his reputation, setting stage for never-ending feuds with the state. But his constant exchanges with the president appear to have worked in his favor. On several occasions, Joho and the head of state have differed publicly in fierce war of words. Acting on directive from above, police have denied Joho access to several state functions at the coast, including the reopening of the Mutongwe ferry services. Even though ferry, according to me, is a devout function and affects the lives of my people, I ought to have been there. He has criticized the government's approach to the land issue at the coast. The government has seized his containers before and at one point his security was withdrawn and asked to surrender his firearm. And even Coast Regional Coordinator Nelson Marwa and Joho have differed in public. Several state agencies went after Joho, including the Kenya Revenue Authority, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and the Kenya National Examinations Council. The government literally drove Joho to fame, installing him as the official sultan. What is so special hapa Mombasa kwenu na wauliza nyinyi? Eh? That governor Joho anataka picha zake hizo zidominate everywhere. Attack anybody? You know I we don't understand this. Kutoka airport everywhere 3 meters unaona picha hizo picha ndizo wananchi watakula. He earned support, admiration, and sympathy from not just his supporters, but also the general public. During his campaigns at the coast, President Uhuru Kenyatta was determined to dislodge Joho, employing every strategy. But these efforts did not work. The opposition bagged four parliamentary seats in Mombasa with only Nyali going to an independent candidate. 